because uh, it, it's going to explain some things. Now, this the, I'm using these text verses for a purpose, okay? Uh, that's not where we're going to stay. We're really going to talk about idolatry. But these two messages go together to explain some things. I want to talk to you about, and this, see, I want to talk to you about Hollywood stars, rock stars, and idolatry. Celebrity idolatry, basically. The reason I want to talk to you about that is because it's, well, it's, it's pretty prevalent today, to say the least. Um, it's everywhere. We see it on the streets all the time when we talk to people. We see it if, we, if we're preaching outside of concerts, if you're preaching outside downtown, uh, if you're preaching outside of comic con. Um, people tell us that we're weird or there's something wrong with us, uh, and they're dressed up like uh, Spider-Man or Darth Vader or something weird, you know? So, I mean, but, but we're the weird ones, you know? And I'm thinking, okay, I mean, you really shouldn't call people weird if you're dressed up like, you know, a superhero guy and you're walking around. I mean, that's the last thing you should do is call somebody weird. But anyway, um, but I, I, I'm going to show you kind of where this, this idolatry started from, sort of in a springboard. The next message is going to get into it real heavy. There's going to be some things that you probably don't want to hear. I don't want to hear him either. I didn't want to study him either. But it's reality. It's where we're at today. We need to understand this. Why? So we are equipped to go engage the world with the gospel and equipped to go engage them uh, with what they need, okay? The truth that they need. See, that's what, it, it's not just about you. You say, I don't have a problem with hip hop or rap music or any of these other things. Well, you may not, and that's good you don't. But you know what? There's people out there that do. There's family members that do. They need to understand what spirit that is of. They didn't understand where it comes from. I'm going to prove to you today where it comes from. Then you go home and do your own study. And I, I suggest you go back and listen, if you've not listened to it yet, the Genesis 6 series that we did um, on all of that in the days of Noah, because we're going to talk about that. Hey, guess what? Newsflash for you. We're in, the day, we're in those, those days as of the days of Noah right now. We are in those days right now. We are in that time right now. We are seeing these things right now. And it's important that we understand exactly what we're facing here so we can be prepared uh, to reach others for Christ. This world is absolutely deluded. It is under a complete delusion. Uh, much of the churches today are under complete delusion as well. They don't know how to face the enemy. They don't know how to confront it. They don't even know what the enemy believes most of the time. They don't even know what they stand for. They don't even know how, how, how they have rushed the gates of the church. And they are, they, they are right there battling inside and coming inside and using whatever means they can to take over. Well, one of these problems that I see today one of the major problems, I'm going to give you some examples of it, because I, I had a, a stream of emails sent to me this week of somebody that was very upset about Hollywood Satanic Roots Part 2 uh, that, that we did. They were very upset about that video uh, because they're stuck in idolatry, plain and simple. And I want to, I'm going to read you. I'm not going to read you the person's name, but I'm going to read you some of those things in there so you understand the mentality of people out there. This is what you're facing. Uh, th this is where people's minds are at. And we're going to talk again about entertainment sometime, what that means to be detained, your mind to be detained so something else can fill it. We're going we're to we're talk about that sometime. But that's really where we're at today too as well. Uh, study the root word of that and study that. Th this, this is the culture. This is the subculture that we are facing today. Now, we're not trying to be relevant you understand that? I'm not teaching you this to try to be relevant. I'm teaching you this because it is the upon the authority of the Word of God. This is the truth, as the Bible says. They live in the land of relativity, in the land of make-believe, and we live in the land of truth, in the words of God, and we stand firm on them. We don't change our message for anyone. So I'm not doing this to be, there's no relativity about it. It's to expose the sin. It's to be able to stand up against it, be able to, and I, by the way, I had to use it yesterday. Some of the same knowledge and, and things that I had studied out and some of these same things, I had to use it yesterday on the street. See, now, if you just sit in your house, lock yourself up, lock yourself in your, in yours and be a hermit and never reach anybody for Christ, never preach the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ, and never try to engage a lost and dying world, well, then shut your ears and don't listen. Because then it won't do you, it won't do you any good anyway. Because if you're just gonna if you're gonna lock yourself up and not do anything for the Lord, not try to reach others, not try to preach the gospel and bring and uh, and uh, um, try to reach men before it's too late for them, then it won't matter. But you know what? Salt irritates. In order to irritate, you got to know something. <laughs> okay, you got to know something. All right. So uh, Genesis chapter six, verse number four. There were giants in the earth in those days, and also after that, when the sons of God came in unto the daughters of men, and they bare children to them, the same became mighty men which were of old. Men of renown. 
And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth. Look at this. And that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. Now, I, I touched on that before when I did that series on Genesis chapter 6, the days of Noah. How many of you, by show of hands, how many of you heard that sermon yet? Okay, you've heard a few of you heard it. Okay, good, good. Uh, go back, and I know you guys were here for that, I think, so you heard it. But um, um, go back and listen if you haven't and, and, and kind of get the idea here. But I'll give you enough of it today where you'll get it from the Word of God here. But, but their thoughts, the imagination, God said he looked on their hearts, he saw that it was just basically evil only continually, that's all. That's it. I mean, we're coming to that point now to where this is this is like men just sit around and devise wicked imaginations. They devise things in their heads. They devise ways to do wickedness and evil. I think it's fascinating. The Bible also tells Daniel, seal up the book. For in the end, knowledge shall run to and fro. Now, what do you think that knowledge is? Now, I believe he's talking about this enlightened knowledge that people have today, that want to have today with witchcraft and everything else. That's the knowledge that is running, the enlightenment that is running to and fro here. These enlightened ones that we have today. These ones that they want to impart something to you. Hey, I just dealt with somebody. You listen, this is all practical to me. I just dealt with a young man that was a Wiccan, that, that his mother is a, is a practicing Wiccan, and he was a Jewish Kabbalist and everything else. And I'm having a conversation. I'm taking the law of God, and I am trying to slay this man with the law of God so he understands that he's a lost man. So this is all, this is all very, very practical. Right there on the street yesterday, dealing with this man. What does it come down to? Idolatry. It comes down to idolatry. It's the Bible saying Matthew chapter 24, verse number 37. But as the days of Noah were, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. For as in the days that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage until the day that Noah entered into the ark. And knew not until the flood came and took them all away. So shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. Now, I'm going to deal with those verses, all of those verses, next hour. Okay? I'm going to deal with them right now. We are going to touch on those. At the end of that message, the next hour, we're going to really, I'm going to, I'm going to tell you, I'm going to show you some things about that anyway. That I think, I think we've, people have always been getting married. Okay? People have always been drinking. People have always been doing that. What does he mean by that? I'm going to show you what I, I believe the Lord is trying to teach us there. And what's going on right now in this world today and in the churches today, by the way. All right. But anyway, first, uh, let's look at the definition. Uh, the Bible says, the Bible says, my children, keep yourselves from idols. Why would he tell saved people? Those are the children, right? Absolutely. Why would he tell them, keep yourselves from idols? Well, he tells them that because obviously we have a tendency to rear up idols in our lives. All right? Just like I know you thought in your mind that you were better than the nation of Israel and those people of old, God's people. And you surely you wouldn't have a golden calf that you would rear up. Surely you wouldn't have one that you would rear up in your life. Surely God hath made thee ten times better than them that you would not ever have that problem. That's only why he wrote the whole book for our admonition and for lessons for our learning, right? And he gave that book to you so you would learn from them. Why? Because idolatry has always been a problem. Amen? Lord says, some horses, some mules. <laughs> Stubborn. That's right. Stubborn. But anyway, the Bible, and I'm going to give you some verses on fleeing idolatry and everything like that. But we have today, we have an epidemic in America. And I mean, people, they live in this, in this alternate type universe of, uh, and I'm just using that for lack of a better term, but they live in this, this, their own, their own version of reality to where basically movie stars or football stars or, or, um, rock music stars or the, they're, they're idolized. They're idolized. They look up to these people. They mimic these people. We're going to talk about that. They actually, psychology, those, they, have a, they have a name for it. And I'm going to give you their name for it, but that's not what the Bible calls it. The Bible calls it idolatry. 
they can call it whatever they want, but the Bible calls it idolatry. I'm just going to say that even even a even even a a crackpot psychiatrist. If that makes any of you mad, they're good. But uh, if um, even they can identify it, Amen. What is it though? Well, it's excessive attachment. Webster's eighteen twenty dictionary says it's excessive attachment or veneration for anything or that which borders on adoration. You ever met people that can't, like they have to DVR every episode of some show, and they or or they can't leave their house if a show's on. They're not leaving. They're not going anywhere. You're like you're not getting them out of the house. I, I heard one. I'm I'm not leaving. I'm just, Show's coming on pretty soon. And they, they're so attached to it. There's this attachment to it. Well, what's that? Yeah. You, yeah. Electric man shuts their power off. And they, I mean, they're, I mean, I bet you you get the most complaints because people say, my TV's not working. I can't watch my movies. I can't watch my favorite show. I can't watch the high priestess Oprah. Amen. Let me give you another example. Let me give you some examples of this in modern pop culture today. Hollywood, rock, music, hip. We're going to talk about hip hop and that in another hour here. But, but, but just to give you an idea here, take, for instance, those that go to KISS concerts. You, have, you ever seen those people that go to KISS concerts? What do they do? They paint their face up. They tattoo their bodies up. And they, they what is that? It's idolatry. Who are we are pre as a Christian? We are predestined to be conformed to the image of Christ. Amen. That's who we are to follow after. That's our example. Amen. But you see, these, these these people, many people, and then some claim to be saved. Maybe some are. Paul said, "Hey, keep yourselves from idols." I mean, John said that. Excuse me. Flee idolatry. The apostle Paul said many times. Why? Because we have a tendency to rear up those things in our lives. By the way, KISS, that stands for Knights in Satan's Service. Or Kids in Satan's Service or something. doesn't matter, either one. But these people, they'll paint their faces up with the same makeup that they wear on stage. They'll dress like them. They'll act like them. These people endorse clothing because they know people are going to wear that clothing. And they're going to copy them and wear the same... People wearing satanic symbols and symbols of Illuminati and everything else on their clothing, and you ask them, what does that symbol mean? And they have no idea. Well, why are you wearing it? Why do you have those satanic symbols on? Why are you advertising for the Illuminati or the devil? Why are you doing that? You're idolizing somebody. You have no idea. I mean, I'm going to share this with you the next hour, but I talked to some people that they tried to make fun of me for, for believing that this book was written by the Holy Ghost of God. They were making fun of me yesterday, and I said, well, your music was written by devils, and you listened to it. By the way, I proved it to them, too, and they were like... They had nothing to say. Nuh-uh. Nuh-uh. Uh-huh. Nuh -uh. Nuh -uh. Uh -huh. Prove it to you. Proved it to them. The first person they named, I proved it to them. The first one. You were witness right there. The first one they named. I said, here you go. <laughs> Showed them. Oh, well, they didn't really believe that. <laughs> yeah, they did. They even advertised it. They look at these men like they're gods. That's how they look at them. In Hollywood, actors and, 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 uh, and uh, music stars. By the way, we're going to talk about that stars thing in a little while here. But they, by the way, did you know the first person that used that label as star was a lady back in the 19, 1920s? She was from Canada. You know how she died? She poisoned herself. You know, the Bible says the way of the transgressor is hard. I really wish we believed that. We'd preach it harder if we believed that. Let me ask you a question. Would you say dressing up like your favorite actor or actress would be idolatry? 
Would that be to the point of veneration of something or placing it before God? Thousands of professing Christians put Hollywood rock star and sports figures before God. That would be making that person an idol or practicing idolatry. A person, that, that word idolatry also is a person loved or an idol means a person loved and honored to adoration. Man, it's where that, I mean, that person's their idol. You ever heard people say that? That's my idol. No kidding. First John chapter 5, verse number 21, again, he says, little children, keep yourselves from idols. Amen. We are warned not to raise up idols in our lives that would take the place of our allegiance to our jealous God. It is a consuming fire. You know, I really wish some people would study a little bit further than the end of their nose. Because the only attribute they think God has is love. But our God is a consuming fire. Our God is a jealous God. And he is always, you study it out, he is always the king of righteousness before he's the king of peace. Always the king of righteousness. Every one of his attributes flows from his righteousness. Last time I checked, God doesn't like you mimicking devils. I mean, really? Please don't anybody send me a question like, do you think I should participate in Halloween? Send that question to Aaron, please. <laughs> because for the child of God to have any place in Halloween is foolishness. It has nothing to do with the Spirit of God. It is antichrist. It is wick it's it's witchcraft completely and has no place for the child of God. None. It's like saying does God want me to dress up and hang around devils? That would be idolatry and witchcraft. I can promise you that God does not want you to do that. But what about the kids? What about them? But they won't get to dress up. Who cares? Since when do you have to dress up? Why don't you be yourself? First Corinthians chapter 10, verse number 14. Wherefore, my dearly beloved, flee from idolatry. Apostle Paul tells the Corinthians, flee from idolatry. Galatians chapter 5, verse number 20. One of the works of the flesh. Look at it. Idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies. Idolatry. If it wasn't a problem, he sure wouldn't have mentioned it many times over. If it wasn't the work of the flesh. All that is nothing but a work of the flesh. Colossians chapter 3, verse number 5 says, Mortify therefore your members which are upon the earth, fornication, uncleanness, inordinate affection, evil conspicuousness, covetousness, which is idolatry. Hmm. No Christian should be lifting up these stars to a place of veneration. No, I, I know Christians that are more loyal to Duck Dynasty than to Jesus Christ. Believe me, I got all their hate mail. I preached that sermon, Dangers of Duck Dynasty. My goodness, they stood up for Phil more than they did Jesus. Unbelievable. Never, ne couldn't imagine the number, the amount of idolatry that goes into that. I, I mean, I literally had a Christian family went full attack mode. I mean, they were on Facebook. They were coming out of everywhere. They had a big family, man. They were just popping in out of everywhere. Boop, 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 boop. They were just popping in and just like jumping on it and attacking it because I expected I expose the fact that, I mean, do you really think that this young lady, 17 years old, should be on dancing like a prostitute? You think that's right? I think that's Christian? How about some of you don't have a clue? And it's really sad. 
Here's what you don't have a clue. <laughs> First of all, if you knew anything about who owns the ABC network, who has the partnership with Disney, okay? If you understand what Disney does to little girls, they take them here and they raise them up to here and they turn them into a tramp in front of everybody's eyes. And that's their game plan. That's what they do. And that's what they did to that girl. All the while, her so-called religious grandfather, her religious, her, 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 her God-fearing dad, who are elders in that church, by the way, the Church of Christ there, are watching this. And then I have Christians that are mad at me. That, I mean, professing Christians that otherwise would have a pretty decent testimony about things. They are That thread turned into like a 700 uh, comment thread and they were going ape on that. Oh, you shouldn't say that about that girl. You should, wait a minute. No, he shouldn't send his daughter half naked on TV to dance in front of men seductively. Amen. What are you mad at me for? I'm not the one that sent the girl there. Remember Mr. Religious, Mr. Godly Phil and his, and his son did. And then they laugh at Christians because they do this little, this little, this little, this little mocking satanic thing right in front of them. And they, say, and they have this guy, her father, look at her dresses and say, no, that's not good. No, that, do you understand they are laughing in your father's face? They are making fun of you and making millions on you, laughing at you. And you're so stuck in idolatry, you can't even see it. I mean, I've never seen a so-called Christian family attack a preacher over something like that in my life. I was shocked. Exactly. It was unbelievable to see. That is the depravity and the idolatry that we face. This is, how pe you're, this is how people are so absolutely consumed with idolatry today. They wouldn't say nothing bad about Phil. But boy, they, they I mean, they acted like I was, I'm, I'm making millions in the ministry. Oh, you must be preaching for money. Yeah, because that's why I preach like this, because it brings a lot of money. I tell you, man. <laughs> yeah, I get a lot of friends doing that telling you, man, it's big money in making people mad today. It's big money in preaching against people's pet sins. Ridiculous. Bible says to mortify, therefore, those things. No Christian should be lifting these people up. There are Christians today that are, that, that are stuck in the idolatry of sports as well. They're more loyal to football teams than to the, than to, than to the King James. If you say King James to some Christians, they think you're talking about James LeBron. Mm -hmm. That's what they think you're talking about. They can tell you more about football stats, baseball stats, and their favorite teams than they can about the books of the Bible. These are professing Christians that go to church every week. And you ask them Bible questions, and they couldn't answer you a thing. But you ask them about their favorite football team, and they'd be able to explain to you their football team. They'd be able to explain to you who their favorite team is. They couldn't explain to you anything about the Word of God. We go out there all the time. They don't know a thing. That's why when they hear the message of the Bible and we preach it, they can't understand it. They look at us like we're crazy. Not one verse. No. But they'll spout out, judge not. Right, he lives it. I just don't know it, but I live it. Yeah, that makes sense. We've got to be aware of putting anything ourselves. We've got to be aware of putting anything before God, before Christ. The lost world will not admit it or even recognize their absolute idolatry in such thing. People. What happened? Uh, what is that? 
Hey, that's weird. <laughs> Did Phil get a hold of my mic? All right. Anyway, hopefully that won't. Anyway, DJ said, anyway, I'll let you figure that out. Oh, I got this one, yeah, but. Uh, so. Anyway, um. emailed me and uh she was very upset the fact she's like part of the fan club or something she was very upset because we did that hollywood satanic roots video part two covered little house of prairie covered michael landon a few other things and uh this this made her very upset and uh she um all right, they said they can hear it now. Anyway, so she took offense to me exposing Michael Landon consulting with familiar spirits. Now he got his scripts from Satan's kingdom. Um, and I, if you've never heard Hollywood Satanic Roots Part 2, go listen to it. I can't go back and cover all that information. I'm not, I, I, honestly, everything is accurate. It's been checked out. You can, you can check it out. I even emailed the person that I got the, the information from. Everything stands firm. I mean, there's nothing that was, that was said that was amiss. All right, that I know of anyway as of right now. All right, anyway, so this young lady claims to be a, a daughter of a King James-only pastor, a Sovereign Grace Baptist pastor, all right? She took offense to, my, to, to this, um, and I'll, I'll explain this a little bit here. Uh, she said this, she said, I've been saved by God's grace since I was nine years old. A piano player in my church, my dad is a pastor. I go to church every Sunday. I'm a Baptist too. Guess what? I know about God and his doctrines and his teachings. I know enough to understand that God don't inspire sermons that condemn people. But those that are full of love for the lost, you all have no love for the lost. If you are almost, if you are almost laughing when you say someone is in hell, you better watch it. He, she goes on to say, Michael was raised a Jew, and God has a special place for his people. Michael had every right to be against Christians. Based on the fact he received such hatred from them as a child for being Jewish. Probably from some so-called Christians as yourself. But he didn't hold hatred in his heart for Christianity. How do you know what he had in his heart? Oddly enough, he promoted it as a great way of life through his works. No, he didn't. He didn't promote Jesus Christ through anything. He promoted morality, but he didn't promote Jesus Christ. He promoted the generic God of Hollywood, which is Freemasonry. Um, he, he promoted that, but he didn't promote Jesus Christ. Come on. I just watched your video of Michael Land, and I was disgusted. How dare you call yourself a Christian? I, I'm the daughter of a Baptist preacher, and we have always loved Michael Land and his work. My goodness, never have seen a show that spoke of God and family values like Michael Landon did. Now, remember, we're not to judge and everything, right? 
Yeah, wait, wait, you haven't heard nothing yet. You haven't heard nothing yet. All right, now remember, now this is this is the idolatry I'm telling you about. Now watch this. Remember, remember, you shouldn't say anything bad about Michael and right? Remember that? Okay. What a loser you are. I have rep <laughs> uh, uh, I <laughs> I I'm trying. Don't don't make me laugh. Okay. I've reported you to Michael's family and their lawyers is contacting you right away. The lawyers contact you right away. This is not going to happen. These are all lies. Saying someone went to hell? How do you know God didn't save him on his deathbed? Ronald Reagan was always clawing and not wanting to die, and everyone believes he was saved. Well, I don't. I mean, okay. How dare you criticize a wonderful man who has touched too many lives? I hate you, sir. I mean, you, you are getting some grief over this. I guarantee it. You bet I am. <laughs> I'm so mad. What a loser. <clears throat> Michael Landon has done more good for this world than you ever will. Who cares if he didn't believe exactly like you? Do you believe everything his daughter believed? Just because his daughter said he believed that Michael had powers doesn't mean he did. He never once claimed he had any powers. Loser. I'm contacting all of Michael's family right now, jerk. You are far from a Christian, but a minister of Satan yourself. They were in the pro he says they were in the process of having a lawsuit thrown at them. He saw she's talking about Good Fight Ministries, but that's not true. Actually, I verified that. I emailed. You know who Good Fight Ministries is? Joe Schimmel. He does the Holland Mast, and um, uh, they sold their soul for rock and roll. Have you checked those out? That's Joe Schimmel. So I emailed him directly and asked him. I said, are you, I said, was there a lawsuit? Did you pull this stuff because of that? He said, no, I didn't pull it because of a lawsuit. And he told me why he pulled it. And he was trying to be kind to somebody is what, what his reasoning was behind it. Um, anyway, um, she says, you are, they were in the process of having a lawsuit thrown at them. You are teaching that, sh that watching a show with good morals is wrong. No, I never, never taught that. I, I don't. Anyway, whether, whether you are saved or not, it's still good to not kill, to love one another, to love your neighbor. <laughs> she just told me she hated me. <laughs> the Bible says you have to be saved to keep God's law and commandments. You are teaching more. All of the.